That's all I got. Good night, guys. What's funny is, 120 seconds ago, Mark was quietly reading in the corner. Like, we had to sort of wake Mark up and soak his hand in Red Bull and go through the red thing stage. Now he's all energy. Oh. My mind was actively engaged. I know. It looked like I was sleeping, but I was... No, you were soaking up knowledge like you're always doing. Yeah. Hey, what were you soaking up? Nothing. <laughs> soaking up the states. Learn about geography. Nah, Mark, uh, he's the intellect of the group. He's always reading. He is, he is. He is. He is. No. I am? Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> kind of like he reads a lot. You read, you read. Yeah, but he's just that guy. He's like, he's like a, I like he's like a, uh, aficionado of details, like he's a, you know, knows more than he should about wines and watches and airplanes and, you know, all kinds of crap like that. Whereas you read, you read like philosophy and political science, and you're on a whole other track, and you read more books in a weekend than, than I read in a year. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I said it. You notice how he's not an eye yet? He's like... <laughs> You left me speechless. Yeah, well, I'm going to run it right. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Pellegrino. What's up? Yeah. Wow, you guys have a lot of energy. I'm a little jet lagged, I gotta be honest. I just got back from the dark continent, Europe. And uh, when I landed in Minneapolis, I was. Uh, I was looking for the, the baggage carousel, but I was looking for the arrivals from Los Angeles. And I didn't realize until after I'd been waiting at the Los Angeles baggage carousel for about 20 minutes that I didn't come from Los Angeles. <laughs> I came from Vancouver, where I was doing a show. What do you do for a living, Mark? I kill people. <laughs> the show's violent. It's getting violent, isn't it? Oh, wait. Where, what episode are you guys on? Oh, yeah. It hasn't gotten violent yet. It's gonna get violent. Wow, this hall is so huge. You guys having a good time so far? Yeah. You guys have questions? Lots of questions? Ooh. Well, they're more enthusiastic than you guys. The waving and all that stuff. So I'm not going to go this way. This enthusiasm scares me. I'm going over here where they seem calm. And where they... No, I'm not. That's too... What's up? How are you? You are? Yeah. Welcome. Do you feel welcome by the supernatural family? <laughs> it's okay. It's just that there's hundreds of people staring at you right now. So there's absolutely nothing to be worried about. And I'm judging you quite intensely. But don't be nervous. Do you want to come up here? <laughs> be careful. Are there stairs there? Okay, good. Come and see what I see. You know what I like about this auditorium? The lights aren't blaring in your face and I can actually see each and every one of your faces. How are you? What's your name? Ginger. Ginger, I'm Mark. Hi. You have a question? Um, yeah, I wanted to know what your favorite moment from like conventions or from backstage of the show was. This is my favorite moment. Thank you. Have you been up on stage yet? No. How's it feel? Nerve-wracking. <laughs> Nerve-wracking, like because you have to battle your own anxiety? Yes. Come stay with me up here. <laughs> Hey, you don't have to. But thanks for coming up. Ginger, ladies and gentlemen. And I mean that as a ladies and a single gentleman. Who I see right there. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard to uh, distill all these cons into singular moments of fun. Because I, I just enjoy 
coming to them every, all the time, and I enjoy the entire experience. I mean, uh, the last four cons that I've been to, I've worked literally until four and five in the morning, which, you know, I couldn't conceivably cancel the weekend, but I want to come here and see you guys, so, and then I just... <laughs> Me thanking you for your presence and for your uh, and for your uh, support and, um, and for your your fandom. I mean, your appreciation of, of what we do is what keeps us going. So I want to give back by coming if I can. So even if I'm in a stretcher, I'm coming. <laughs> I love you too. That's what I'm talking about. What's that? Wait a minute, I have, hold on, I didn't hear that because there was an echo. Say it again. Hey, how are you? Um, I'm okay. I'm, I, I just got over a sickness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, the place where I was, everybody was sick and I got it. But I'm not contagious now. I wouldn't come here and get you all sick. I'm kidding, I would! Of course I'd get you sick! Um, so I'm just feeling a little under the weather and jet lag, but other than that, I'm fantastic. Thank you. When you guys ask me questions like this, I feel like, as an actor, this is something I should know. <laughs> um, because I do spend quite a lot of time, like, journaling and doing imagination work on characters. <laughs> but it never occurs to me to think of Lucifer and a mixtape. <laughs> to put those two things together and to think, what kind of mixtape would Lucifer listen to? <laughs> um, Ozzy. <laughs> no, I think it'd be Celine Dion. Backstreet Boys. A little Judas Priest just to make things spicy. Cindy Lauper, yeah, man. And I see no true colors shining through. Alright, that's the song Lucifer wants to hear from Dad. I see your true colors. That's why I love you. Now let me ask you a question. Did that did that bust your preconceptions about Lucifer's mixtape? No. You really thought that you know he, he would have uh, like Frank Sinatra. Like Metallica, except Iron Maiden, huh? Van Halen, anything heavy metalish, right? Led Zeppelin, yeah, Bill Stones. There you go. Thanks. I'm a bit of a contrarian. I think may, maybe many of you know that about me. So if somebody tries to get me to go one way, um, I'm likely to go the exact opposite way just because I can. It's weird. I admit it. Okay. Hi, my name is Dave. I'm from Austin, Minnesota. Hey. He has a lot of cool powers? Like what besides blowing things up with a snap of his finger? <laughs> now that would be a great power to have, by the way. And I can think of a couple of people I would use it on. 
and I know you guys know what I'm thinking. But what other powers does he have? Tune me in. Because every power that he said he had, he didn't. He couldn't create angels. What good is he? Ooh, time travel. What, what time would you like to go back to in history? Would you go back to a time in history? Really? That's frightening. I mean, it's both frightening. It's frightening either way, right? If you think about it. But, I mean, you don't have to go back for a long period of time. You'd only go back for like five minutes. Of course, that could be enough to do you in in almost any era of history. But there's none that you can think of that you would go back out of curiosity to see? You'd like to see that? Wow. I mean, that would be very interesting. Um, God, there's so many things I'd like to see. They're almost, they're almost too numerous to name. But yeah, I'd go there. I'd, I'd love to go to the Acropolis during the golden age of Greece, right? Hang out with Socrates, bust his balls a little bit. <laughs> See what Plato was really like. Aristotle, can you imagine meeting these giants? See, uh, see Greek drama and, and uh, comedy from the, it, it, right there, you know, when it was happening. That would be awesome. Going to Jerusalem during the first century AD, walking with Jesus, wouldn't that be cool? It'd probably be really disappointing. <laughs> because you build up these, you know, these feelings about these great historical figures and they will always disappoint you because they're human. Right? But I'd like to see that. I've been to Golgotha. Have you been there? Golgotha. Mount of Skulls, where Jesus was crucified. It's really weird. There's a church surrounding it. It's under a glass. It's under a glass case. So you don't get the. You don't get the feeling for time and space. I recommend it if you can. Good. Where do you want to go? Yes. Yes. I've never been there. I've never been there. I've never been there. The India. Right? It's pretty wide. Big place? Yeah, it's big. It's a big place. I'd like to go back for just a split second or so to the dinosaur time, see if they really had feathers. Right, but that could be really, that could be really sketchy. I mean, back then, apparently, there was more oxygen in the atmosphere, so the insects were enormous. And I, I don't know if you know this, but I have an issue with insects. Do you? They suck, right? What the fuck? What is their purpose? What is your least favorite insect? Oh, butterflies. If yeah, but you want to know something freaky about butterflies? They take... What? You guys are naughty. <laughs> Butterflies taste with their feet. No, that's weird. So now you know when a butterfly is crawling on your head, he's very probably tasting your hand with his feet, attempting to identify if your hand is food. You're right, that's my answer to the question, but he doesn't speak English. So that doesn't matter, it's a material game. So then, you want to know another weird thing about butterflies? They eat with their noses. They consume with their proboscis. That is the question. I didn't know this. So not only do they morph from a caterpillar to something else, they taste of their feet and eat with their noses. How do you feel about butterflies now? And I'm sure there's some version of a butterfly that lives in the Amazon forest that eats human flesh. <laughs> and Australia, two of the most horrific places on earth 
for insects. Um, you know there is a, a fish that swims in the Amazon River. Yes, I know there's a fish that swims in the Amazon River, they say. But this particular fish, apparently, should I go on? Yes. <laughs> Hurry up, tell us the scary, gory details. If you go to the bathroom in the river, will swim into your urinary canal and die. Okay, that's bad. But what's really bad is that when it dies, its spikes go protrude like that. You still want to go to the Amazon? You said you wanted to go everywhere. Okay, good. I've succeeded. <laughs> I've created fear and anxiety. <laughs> You're so devilish. <laughs> yeah. You're next. Um, <laughs> hey, Rebecca. I have a weird question. There is no weird question. So that's a question that can get me into a lot of trouble. <laughs> um, there's definitely times when I've disagreed with the way the character was, and, um, and the way they projected his story arc to be. <laughs> you are talking about on this show, right? Because I'm not talking about this show. with you, because um, I don't know how to be any other way, um, yeah, I, I felt there were a lot of cool things about Lucifer as he evolved into sort of an impish, playful character, but I also liked Apocalyptic Lucifer a lot, because Apocalyptic Lucifer was really scary. And he had the dry sense of humor, but it was, it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, didn't come from, it didn't come from lampooning. It came from being above it and beyond it. And there was something very powerful about that. Now, on the other hand, in reality, I think evil should be mocked. Because evil is weak. It's only in our narratives that we create evil as an equal, opposite, or even superior power to the good. Evil in reality is just parasitic. It, have you noticed that? All evil is parasitic. Even evil people that acquire high office, or... <laughs> not saying that. That acquire high office, or wealth, or worldly power, they do so, um, they do so by parasitizing the good. Any criminal you can think of can't exist on his own merits. He doesn't produce anything, he steals. So he relies on the productive capacity and the smarts of you. Weak. All evil is weak. So there's a part of me that likes the, when Lucifer's sort of lampooning or being lampooned, or, you know, the butt of the joke, because it, it seems more appropriate to me that evil should be mocked and not feared. Don't fear evil, folks. Laugh at it. <laughs> evil should be laughed at. What about you? Tell me about your, your feelings about story. Just in general? No. I think you have specific ideas about stories going south. <laughs> Are you a writer? Yeah. And you have specific ideas about how stories have gone wrong. <laughs> Go ahead. 
Be honest. Just between you and me. This isn't going this isn't going out of this room. No, say it. Why? What are you afraid of? Are you afraid of the repercussions? What will the repercussions be? Then do it. Say it. Say it. Fuck the repercussions. I say this to repercussions. I want to hear it. I'm, I'm curious. Just as a, as a writer as well, because I sort of write. Okay. Not well, but I do. I try. That's why you didn't want to say anything. <laughs> um, I see what you're saying. However, this is like one of the few fandoms where I think the canon is much stronger in their minds than it is in the minds of the writers. <laughs> Who I think forget from one year to the next exactly what they've done and what they've said. But, um, okay. But it's sort of a symbiotic relationship in a way, don't you think? I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for your question. <laughs> Unless I'm standing right here in front of the speaker, I can't hear a word you guys are saying. Because it echoes around really weird. Love you. I heard that. <laughs> What's up? Disturbing. <laughs> the whole image is just disturbing. How old are you? <laughs> That's why that question isn't disturbing to you. I'm 53. That's why it's disturbing to me. I'm, I'm a lot closer to that reality than you. And I'm not only a lot closer, I feel it. How many people here are 50 or over? Uh. Well, is it me or was there, did something happen to you once you turned into that decade? A realization of your own mortality? Of freedom. Well, you could, you could, it could make you free for sure. Like, fuck it, I'm gonna die and I know it. <laughs> and that's a good thing, I think. I think that's a very positive response. But then there's also that other thing, which is, Ugh, I'm gonna die, holy shit. <laughs> the self-check, perhaps healthy, but still frightening. What song would I have? Deja vu. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I have to think about that one. I don't feel like any one song defines me. Hell's bells. <laughs> What are the words to that song? I would have helped. None of those words really de define me, though. They might define Lucifer. But even then, you have to get all these songs together as a compilation. It has to be a mixed record. So there has to be enough ashes there to have a whole thing. Now, wait a minute, let me ask you a question. I might have heard something like this before, but can they do that? Can they really make your ashes into a fucking record? What? Well, maybe that's, a, maybe that's not such a bad idea. <laughs> you pass my, my ashes down from generation to generation, they could play me. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's kind of cool. 
Yeah. Don't think about that one. What's up? Hey. Hey. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Splits between two chairs. Oh. It was impressive. No, Van Damme was a dancer. I was a martial artist. I could kick Van Damme's ass. Even now. Fuck him up so bad. Why am I getting so mad at Van Damme? I'll tell you why. I used to train with this guy. His name was Olivier Gruner. Have you ever heard of Olivier Gruner? Because he did a couple of movies. Really? Are you, are you fucking with me? You've heard of Olivier Gruner? You're a huge Kung Fu fan? Okay. Yeah, Olivier was my trainer. Like we trained, I trained uh, kickboxing and Thai boxing with him. He's one of my trainers. And uh, I guess one day he was, and he got into the movie industry for a while. I'd help him with acting too. And uh, one day he was asked by some movie magazine about Van Damme. Who would win in a fight between him and Van Damme? Now, Olivier Gruner was a real fighter. Van Damme ain't a real fighter. And so he said that. Well, I'm a fighter, I'd beat him up pretty bad. <laughs> In his French accent, I would beat him up uh, very bad. Uh, and so uh, one day we came home from training, we did like a five mile run, came back to his apartment, and there was a message on his answering machine. It was Van Damme. This is uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme. I just want you to know anytime you want to step in the ring and get busy, I'm ready to do it. <laughs> and uh, who did that sound like? Arnold Schwarzenegger? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, needless to say, that never happened. I think Olivier did call him back and say, let's do it. He didn't, didn't do it. And I went on that long diatribe for nothing. We went down a rabbit hole there, but... <clears throat> um, yoga. The point is, I'm not limber anymore. <laughs> and the point is, that I don't do yoga. And Lucifer wouldn't do yoga. And so I'm not even going to entertain the question.